going on, Mush Fam? This is Alex Dor coming at you live from Mushroom Revival headquarters. And today we have an exciting video on how to use an all-American pressure cooker. Um, today we're going to be demonstrating how to use the electric version. Um, so check it out, and as always, check out our website www.mushroom-revival.com. Follow all of our social media. Check out our podcasts um, and the great products that we're selling on our website. If you want more lab skills and, and more to do with what we're gonna show you with the, the pressure cooker, check out our free book um, that we have, the ebook on our website, um, www.mushroom-revival.com. So what is a, a pressure cooker? Why, why would you use it? Um, it basically uses hot steam to sterilize any tools or substrate you are using, um, particularly in this case for mushroom cultivation. Um, there are an electric version and a traditional pressure cooker, um, which a lot of people have used and are familiar with for canning um, and other purposes. Uh, a typical one, you know, a small Presto one is cost about $65, um, where a more high-tech one, which we're going to show you in a second, um, costs about $900 um, to $930 with shipping. Um, and it is incredible and it'll change your life if you are a mushroom cultivator highly recommend this model that we're gonna show you um, and it's a really good one so uh, that's the main difference um, is is electric versus putting it on your stovetop and obviously the electric one costs a little bit more um, but we like it more because you don't need a stovetop. You don't need a propane burner and you can just plug it into your outlet. For us, it's way more versatile, especially running a business. Um, and you can run it 365 days a year and don't have to worry about um, running propane burners outside in the winter. So um, let's take a look on how to run this cooker. Hi everyone, it's Mads from Mushroom Revival. This is our All-American, one of four stereoclaves that we use. I'm gonna start with a bit of a tour here. So these things can be kind of heavy, and we put them on this little dolly. So we, it's very easy to move it around our warehouse uh, with these cleats that support the base. Highly recommend putting these on wheels. That would be the first thing. Here we have the dial. This controls the heat. There's the light, which indicates that it's on. Of course, the on-off switch. And then up here on the lid, we have the valve, which this, this is where you initiate and release the pressure building. And then our gauge, which is extremely important, of course. We have wings on all sides to help tighten. And inside of here, there's this little snake. So this will push, well pull rather, the, the hot air and yeah. A note, quick note, we actually took these off of a, two of our lids and it runs fine without it. If you do use these little hands that come with it, the snake would feed down in here. But oftentimes we don't use this at all. It kind of depends on what you're cooking. So as you can see, there's also this grate at the bottom, and this is to keep whatever contents you put in out of this water. And you need the water in there to fill the steam pressure. All American recommends using distilled water. However, we have used filtered water in the past, and it's been no problem. We just make sure that it's been filtered through a standard like Brita filter, Aqua Gear, something like that. But as always, it's good to practice what what the technician recommends, which is distilled, and we did switch to distilled water. You should make sure to change the water every now and then. You can kind of monitor the water just by looking at it. I have seen like little colonies of mycelium growing sometimes, um, and depending on what you're cooking, you could just get contents at the bottom. And it's important to have water that doesn't have a lot of particulate in it to optimize your steam sterilization. So, some quick notes on cleaning the machine. 
It's pretty easy. It cleans itself. It's sterilizing the insides. But you, you do have to lift up this whole thing to dump out the water. Yeah, so, so keep that in mind. Yet another good reason to put it on wheels. And then I just wipe out the insides and the outsides or whatever kind of grime that's built up with isopropyl. And stainless steel, like, what's that stuff? Wool, stainless steel wool, steel wool. That's great to scrub the outsides if you should need to. So closing the lid, this is probably one of the most essential parts of activating a good cook. You've gotta close this thing right. So some tips are, first of all, you're gonna start here with this arrow and it's gonna line up with this little lip. Just put it slightly to the left. And then once you've got the whole lid kind of level, then you can just shimmy it over. There's gonna be a lot of change when you do that. So for example, you can see that on one side, this gap is like super small and the corresponding wing on the other side is huge. So that's indicating that it's not level. So usually what I do is I find where the biggest variation is, which would probably be these two, and then like just hit it with my fist or you can use a mallet until you see with your eye that it's level. And once that's level, I'll bring up the wings and like slightly tighten it on either side and then look around everywhere else. And usually that's good enough and you can get a pretty level lid. However, sometimes you'll see that, okay, this, this wing over here is a little bit higher than, than this one. So you can actually use this wing to tighten and bring down the lid. So if you come closer, I'll give you a good example of that. So if I wanted to bring this closer, I, you can literally just tighten it. And as you can see, get, get closer. So you kind of have to play around with it, but it's just really key that you have equal space all around. That's how you know it's level. And then tighten it as tight as you can. So I just tighten until I can't anymore. And if you wanted to go beyond that, you could get a mallet and just tap it a little bit. You don't wanna go too far because you could ruin the, the wings. Um, also, some of these have been knocked off somehow. So you have to be gentle, but also stern. And then once, once your lid's on tight, you turn up the heat all the way to 10. And this light would be on if it was plugged in. And depending on the contents of your pressure cooker, anywhere from five to 20 minutes after you turn it on, you should start hearing some perspiration here and there's some wetness and vapor. And you, that's a good thing. You actually want that to run for about five minutes. And then once it's spitting up a lot, then you can flip this down and allow it to start building pressure. So from here, there's two different routes you can go. Typically, we flip this down, allow it to build pressure up to 17, which is this green part, and just turn it on for however long we need. But if you're trying to really, really sterilize something like substrate, it's good to let it build up into this green area and then reopen the valve so it will bleed out, spit out all that pressure and go back down to zero. And if you're listening during this time, you'll hear some crunchiness. So it's not, it's not a clean steam coming out. So when, it, when, that, when you hear that crunchiness, those are like pockets of air and that's what you're trying to get rid of. So this secondary release was recommended to me by a technician at All American to just ensure that you are getting steam in every single area. Again, it depends on what you're trying to cook for liquid culture or agar and basic sterilization of jars. We don't, we don't do that. But if we're really about, about to cook for a big batch and we're sterilizing tools or a big amount of substrate, then we will go ahead and do that. 
So when you are releasing the steam, it's pretty loud and hissy and a bit scary, but fear not, everything's fine. It's supposed to sound like that. There's also this little skirt over here. So all the water that does come out will be pushed down. And as long as you are smart and have common sense, you're not gonna get hurt. And then the second time you bring it up to pressure, or the first time, if you're not doing a second purge, or purge at all rather, then you want to wait until this needle not gets into the green, but actually gets into where this green and red crosses over. So that's right about 20. And that's where the action happens. That's what Autumn All American recommends. And once you see the needle in that range, you're just gonna take this dial and slowly turn it down until you see this light go off. And that, that varies a lot. So it depends on what's in here, how much space is in here. I've seen it turn off as soon as nine. I, I think most common, it turns off around seven. And then for agar, which we just use a, a pretty small vessel for that, it's mostly space. I, that, that tends to turn off around four. So it's, yeah, just go slow. And once it's off, then that's, that's where you want this machine to stick for the next however long you're cooking. Uh, that's a whole nother variant too, depending on what you're cooking, you wanna cook for however long. I can get into that if you want. Like liquid culture, we would cook for about 17 minutes. So this is a quart sized jar full of distilled water and honey. Um, if we are cooking jars with broth and grain, like you've seen in many of our other videos, those jars, we cook for 135 minutes. Agar, we follow the recipe, but that calls for 45 minutes. If we're sterilizing tools and polyfill and other things for, for bulk cultivation, we will do about two hours. And then sometimes if we get contamination in a jar and it's trichoderma or something we don't want to let out at all we'll cook this baby for like two three hours yeah so it all depends you kind of have to get to know these machines a little bit there will probably be some trial and error yeah you'll get to know the ins and outs the more you play with them i've probably ran these things 150 200 times now and they're great i trust them a lot what I do without them. Timers are really helpful. You can keep track on your phone or watch or if you're vigilant enough. But we actually use a physical timer that we plug the stereo clave into and then we plug it into the wall. And these timers are great, but I'm sure any timer you find will be just as functional. So if, you, if you're using this brand in particular, just make sure that you've pressed confirm and that you see this light on because you want this to be activated. It's kind of the interface between your electricity and the autoclave. And these are awesome because you can just walk away or leave work or whatever. The whole process can take up to five hours and it is important to keep an eye on your gauge especially for things like liquid culture if you're using something like honey it can caramelize if you wait too long and if it you do see your needle get into the caution that's not necessarily bad but it can overcook things like rice or honey or any kind of more organic material like that if you're sterilizing no big deal just like a metal tool but it's it's important to be vigilant for some things so yeah just Keep your cooker close by and respect it. It'll help you out a lot, I promise. So there you have it. That's another video um, teaching you some, some other lab skills and some more information about the wonderful wacky world of mushrooms. So definitely check out our site, www.mushroom-revival.com. Download our free ebook, which gives you a lot of different cultivation techniques, um, lab skills, uh, and show you how to take this to the next level um, to make your own agar to grow your own mushrooms to um, be a mad scientist in the lab and do some really cool stuff so check us out
click that subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comment section below. Share this video around and tell us what you think. If you have any um, suggestions for future videos that you want us to cover, um, please put them in the comment section below or shoot us an email at mushroomrevival at gmail.com. Bless. Have a great day.